Hey, what's going on, guys? Today I'm going to show you how to make one of these cool things standing right in front of you. Um, it's a chain link, portable chain link fence section uh, that I made in the 150 scale to suit the models I have here. Um, I'm going to show you today how to make them. They are very easy to make. They take a little while. Um, I didn't really time myself on how long it took to make them because I did like two and three at a time. Um, but I would say probably somewhere between 30 minutes and an hour depending on how quick you are with doing things and stuff and how fast um, you can make them. Anyway, I'll just get right into it. Uh, I modeled this after 6 by 12, uh, 6 feet by 12 feet piece. So I, I doodle searched somebody that made them and they said they had different uh, sections but the most common one was at a 6 by 12. Um, anyway, to make these, you're going to need a few small things. Number one, obviously to make the chain link, you need chain link. Um, or, you don't need chain link. But, what I use for chain link is just wire mesh from, uh, screen door, screen windows. Yeah, I, that didn't come out right. Um. Like on, on your back door, you have like a screen door. That's what the word I was looking for. Uh, and I was also looking for that word in the collection video too. But on your screen door, you have like this mesh that you can open up so then the air can come into your house and ventilate. Um, basically, all you want to do is just, if you have an, uh, a section of that, like if you have a few like doors, if you're like a uh, strap or something like that, and you have like a extra window, piece and as long as you're fine with taking it apart just cut that uh for chain link because uh chain link you know on the diagonal let's see if i can focus the camera i'm so didn't used to it um you can see it has that x pattern into it because chain uh typical chain link has a cross pattern um so what you want to do is just tilt that piece that you have tilt that to a 45 so instead of it cutting straight up and down squares it's cutting like diamond uh, pattern, just slanted squares. Um, so you want to cut that. This is approximately uh, six by twelve is approximately three inches long by one and a half tall. Even though um, the st the legs are actually one and a half, and the the link is like one and three quarters or something, or one and a quarter. Sorry. Um, anyway, so that's that. And you just want to make sure you have it as square as you can. I know mine didn't really come out perfect, but whatever. Uh, the next step is that you need two legs, which are the little pole stands. Um, for this, and it, it's very easy, I'm sure you might have some around your house. They're just, uh, barbecue, uh, not barbecue, um, like shish kebab skewers. The little wooden ones uh, that have a point at the end. You put like vegetables or meat on them. Um, I bought these at a yard sale just for modeling purposes. Anyway, if you want to cut these to the one and a half inch length. So then they're about six feet tall. And then after that, all you need to do is cut these little feet out. And these are uh, just little balsa wood squares that I didn't really... I just eyed them. Um, I just eyed one, I traced it out around the stick, just so that it looked good. Um, yeah. Basically, it's, it's about, I'd say, three-eighths by a quarter wide. Um, so that's just a little balsa wood square piece that swims in crap. Um, anyway, you want to glue the sticks. Oops. Uh, glue the stick sticks onto the uh base sorry um glue that or actually hold on before you do that you want to glue the chain link onto the sticks and for this i just use some super glue um which i know super gluing like a metal to a wood it never really worked out for me but this time what i did is i i cut this um i was making this little like pill bottle into a 
a uh, fuel tank, which I never completed because it turned out like crap. Um, but I just had the uh, the lid on it. I said a screw on lid, and what I did was I just super glued down the strip here. I sticked it on, and then I held it. I put some uh, adequate pressure on it with the uh, cap, and because the cap was plastic, like a hard plastic, it didn't really it didn't stick to the uh, skewer uh, stick. So then you want to glue it onto each leg, and then or glue it on each uh, yeah leg, and then after that you want to glue each leg onto the feet, um, which is very simple. The only thing I would say is that you just have to make sure that it's straight because mine turn out sort of bent, which I don't really care whether bent or straight, but if you're the OCD person, like, typical me, um, but not this time, you would probably want the bases to be straight. Anyway, moving off of that. Now after it's all glued, just wait up about like 30 seconds, wait for the super glue to dry, and if you don't, if you want to wait, then wait, uh, for whatever the curing time is, for your glue or whatever. Um, for me, I just went right after it because I wanted to try to mass produce them and do them quick um, anyway after that you're gonna need two kinds of paints you're gonna need flat black which I use testers little like one ounce jars that you did your local hobby shop and then after that I have um, aluminum testers paint it's a little one ounce sand in uh, aluminum seems to work out very nice because I, I was thinking that aluminum was like the same as steel which is the same as metallic silver because uh, that's what they all look like in in the in their separate jars they all look like the same darn color but it turns out they're actually a little bit different than each other so aluminum seemed to work nice and I know that a lot of the poles are made out of either light iron steel or um, like aluminum ish type some some kind of light metal um, so that I think the color turned out great for what they are um, I know a lot of them are like a flat, just plain steel color, but I wasn't going to go around and mess with that. I just thought this looked nice. Um, so what you want to do is, what I did first is I did the feet first, painted them black, so then if I got any residue onto the stick, I just cover that over in chrome, um, or the uh, aluminum, sorry. And then... What I did was then I painted the, the legs, obviously, got in all the crevices, like in the bottom here. Wait, sorry, I have a, a tripod, so I'm trying to do that. Did all the crevices in there, um, and stuff. And then to paint the chain link, I just held it like that, like on the top and bottom, so then not much paint got on my fingers. Um, or none of the paint wet, wore off because of it got on my fingers. And then, so you then you paint one side completely. And then um, you go to the back and you paint the rest of it because some of it doesn't, uh, some of it, a lot, most of it comes to the other side, but some of it doesn't, as you can see, just a few seconds ago, there's some shadows of the little black spots on your left that didn't come out right. Um, but other than that, that's really how you make them. They're simple, easy. Um, yeah, and they, they suit to be a a radular chain link fence. Uh, so, let me, oops, sorry. Let me rotate this around. I'm not that on the tripod. And basically, here is what they look like. Um, move my chair around a little bit. That's what they look like on a uh, little scene there with the National picking up the uh, stick for the 5110. Um, I think they look pretty nice as long as you have enough to cover the area that you need. Um, for me, thankfully, I only needed five because for some reason I don't like doing like long jobs and stuff. Um, or at least in, in this stage. Um, or whatever the heck I'm saying. Anyway, that's what they look like. Turn out pretty nice. Um, I'm sure yours would turn out probably a little bit nicer, but anyway, thank you guys for watching.